We've got this breaking news. The S&P is now negative for the year, and so is the Dow, which had already been in that red position. NASDAQ is clinging to uh, the positive green for the year, but at the moment, today's sell-off is putting the Dow on track for a nearly 3% loss for the year. So as we watch all of this, and we see that even as, as people are anxious, the VIX is spiking Highest since April 12th, but this intraday picture shows we're off the earlier highs. So uh, some fear coming out of the market, but still, I would say a 12% gain is, is rather significant. So, Charlie, you're in the chair. You've been talking to Wall Streeters. What are they saying about the sell-off today? Is it all that 10-year yield, 3% hit? Uh, I think it's some of that. I mean, you know, listen, when, when yields get above a certain level, you know, people start talking about earnings, whether it's if it's worth to take the risk on stocks based on where earnings are right now uh, because you know you can you can earn three percent risk-free and that's simply what it comes down to uh, the other thing is exactly what you mentioned about the caterpillar ceo i think that i was watching the tape while that came out and and, and markets did did start to tank a little bit even i mean they're off their lows now as you know yeah but it but, was a a ten percent swing yeah cat was up five percent right right then it fell more than six percent it is now off the lows but barely charlie look at that yeah. and we're going to show the quote um the ceo mr umpleby i saw these uh, flashes hitting the wires that's folks how we get some of this very late breaking news he was on a conference call his stock was up but they can't withhold information and he went out there and said steel costs continue to increase, well, so expect our material costs to go listen up. To, listen to it. I think this is the sort of, um, the, the sort of this is what doesn't make sense about the president's uh, trade policy. Uh, he wants to preserve jobs in the steel industry, which is highly automated. By doing tariffs on that industry, you raise the price of steel. That hurts other industries, like the, like the, the creation of Caterpillar's various products that hurt manufacturing jobs. And I think that's what the, that's what the Caterpillar CEO is getting at. I mean, listen, this is not the 1950s or early 60s. You know, the steel industry is highly automated. Other industries are not as highly automated, but they rely on steel at, at a certain price uh, to, uh, to 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 sell their products. And listen, it, yes, China, China, I'm sure, dumps steel on the market. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Macron said it today, so he's in agreement with Donald Trump. The question is, how do you address that? Do you address mm -hmm. it through much higher tariffs that starts a trade war, which is bad for everybody, or you do it through the WTO, which Macron obviously oh. favors? Uh, let's get back to my story, which, you know, Liz, the... Um, you know, everybody talks about the AT&T Time Warner deal. Yep. There's a big merger going on right now where Sinclair is trying to buy up all these stations from Tribune. It'll give them penetration to something like 72%. If, if this deal goes through, 72% of all households, I mean, it's some massive amount of households that Sinclair, which deal, deals mainly in local markets, they're very conservative, they're a friend of Donald Trump's, and Trump has spoken very favorably of them. If this deal goes through where they can buy it, they're going to get, they can get access, they're, they're going to grow exponentially. Now, here's the one flying the ointment. Thursday, a D.C. circuit crew circuit court essentially was throwing some shade on an FCC rule change, recent rule change, that allowed, that essentially allows um, uh, uh, Sinclair to go beyond the caps on how many homes it, it can hit from, it, from something like 32 percent to something much larger. Uh, and it looks like that if that D.C. circuit court this is based on a lawsuit brought by public uh, public policy groups. That court is going to say no to that rule change, and that is really bad for the stock. Mm. Look at that stock; it's been getting crushed since then. And, a lot, and right now, what we have is, is Sinclair scrambling to figure out how to preserve this. Um, you know, they, Sinclair denies this, but there's a lot of talk in Washington that they're going to the FCC, appealing to them to rule in favor of the deal, despite what the court says. Watch this deal. This is a huge deal. It has huge national implications because Tr President Trump likes the, uh, the the politics of this merger. Uh, a lot of people don't, and uh, it's going to get a lot mm. of headlines. And the stock got crushed starting Friday, and it hasn't stopped getting crushed since. Oof. Capitalism via politics. Uh, well, you know, that's what we cover, the confluence mm. between politics and finance. That's right. And, and we're the best at it. You're the You're best, better. Charlie. Thank, thank you, you very much.